somewhere in there. 40? Okay. All right. Also want to, um, Tom spoke to Thomas from Crossover earlier today, and he asked uh, to be praying for him uh, as uh, the new uh, uh, the course starts again. Got a new group of men, new group of ladies, so please uh, keep uh, Thomas uh, and all of those over at Crossover in your prayers. Uh, we're going to start collecting uh, toilet paper, sugar, coffee, and creamer for them. So if you can help with that, uh, you can start bringing those into the building, uh, and we, I will make sure they get over to Crossover as we get a good load. That's toilet paper, sugar, coffee, and creamer. Those are their four basic staples that they, they go through, a lot of those, a lot of that uh, in, in, in a week's time. So toilet paper, sugar, coffee, and creamer. We do have a lot of people who are uh, shut in. They're sick. Uh, they're battling cancer. Uh, several families are grieving uh, the loss of loved ones. Uh, so we got a lot to be prayerful for. We have a lot to be thankful for. Uh, so encourage you as you pray uh, to be thankful for all the blessings God has given to us, the way that he answers our prayers, uh, the way that he uh, uh, doesn't answer our prayer the way we want him to, but uh, in accordance to his will, which is always better. So we want to be mindful of, of all of these. There are several families traveling away from us, uh, so please keep them in your prayers. Uh, in just a few moments, Jay's going to lead us in our singing. Uh, at the right time, I'm going to ask Brother Charles, if you don't mind, Brother, to dismiss us in prayer to our classes. But we're going to begin our time tonight with a word of prayer. Will you bow with me as we pray? Holy Father in heaven, we bow in your presence tonight. We are indeed thankful for your love and for your tender mercy. Father, we're thankful for each and every family that's represented here tonight, every person that's with us. Dear God, we thank you for the visitors that here are here with us tonight. We, we pray that you'll bless them in a very special way. Father, help us to, to make sure they know how, how much you love them and how much we love them and care for them and are glad that they're with us and that they'll be back with us at every opportunity they have. Father, we, we pray for those tonight that we've mentioned who are hurting, who are sick. Dear God, we, we continue to uh, lift them up before you, knowing that you're the great physician. Dear God, we pray that you'll bless the, the doctors and nurses, the caregivers. We pray for the medicines, the treatments, and all that are being done for uh, each of these. Uh, we pray that uh, you'll continue to bless them, and may they gain a, a good measure of their health. And if it be your will, uh, that, that you will restore them once again. Father, we, we continue to pray for uh, this uh, country. We pray, Father, that you will uh, be with our leaders. May they, they look to you uh, for wisdom and guidance, dear God. We know that uh, things are not the way they ought to be. And we pray, dear God, that there can be a, a revival, that there can be a, a turning around and start going back in the right direction as you would have us to be. Father, we pray for our Bible class teachers tonight. Uh, we pray that as the new quarter begins that uh, we will uh, listen uh, and participate in our classes and father we appreciate our bible class teachers the commitment they have to presenting your word and and uh, teaching uh, within our classes dear god we just pray you'll continue to to be with them uh, father we thank you most of all tonight for uh, your son and our savior jesus christ we thank you for his love we thank you for the sacrifice that he made at the cross and pray that you will look down upon us tonight in your tender mercy you'll forgive us for our sins You'll help us to be more and more like Jesus, for it's through him that we pray. Amen. Gary. Uh, on her tonight so he said just keep them uh, in your prayers it's good to be with you tonight God is good all the time. and all the time good. last Wednesday night about this time I was at the emergency room with my dad got him checked in we waited about an hour and he got up and said let's go home <laughs> I said daddy we need to stay he said we're going home I've waited as long as I've waited I walked by and told the nurse, we're checking ourselves out. Anyway, he's doing better, still kind of weak. Uh, appreciate your prayers. Our first song uh, this evening, number 732, we praise thee, O God. <coughs>
the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, and time shall be no more, and the morning breaks eternal bright and fair. When the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore, and the rollers call of God, where I'll be there. When the There's a man in the Bible that you'll recognize his name really quick. His name is Judas Iscariot. Down here in our Pew Packer class, when we were talking about some of the characters in the New Testament, we got to uh, Judas Iscariot, helped them to learn how to say his last name, if you will, Judas Iscariot, by calling him Judas is a carrot. And that's what he's known as with these little folks down front. Judas is a carrot. But there was something floating around on Facebook a few weeks ago about Judas Iscariot that really struck home. It said Judas Iscariot walked with Jesus, shared meals with Jesus, heard the preaching of Jesus, heard the prayers of Jesus, and witnessed the miracles of Jesus. But Judas was not a true follower of Jesus. He betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver his testimony can be summarized in the words of Jesus found in Matthew chapter 7 beginning at verse number 21 I want to read that to you tonight beginning in verse 21 of Matthew chapter 7 it says not everyone who says to me Lord Lord shall enter the kingdom of heaven but he who does the will of my father in heaven many will say to me in that day Lord Lord have we not prophesied in your name cast out demons in your name and done many wonders in your name verse 23 then I Jesus Jesus will say I never knew you depart from me you who practice lawlessness and that kind of got me to thinking a little bit what is what is our testimony Ju Judas experienced all of these things with Jesus almost on a daily basis but yet he betrayed Jesus for a meager 30 pieces of silver. So my question for all of us tonight is simply this. What is your testimony? What is your testimony? So I'm glad you're here tonight. Are you a true follower? Are we true followers? Or are we more like Judas? Oh, we're true followers on Sunday or Wednesday, right? What about during the week? What about during the week? all week long so I'm glad again glad you're here right in the middle of the week it has a lot to do with with your faith and your love and your your excitement to be together could have been anywhere on a Wednesday night but yet you're here I hope you're glad you're here because you're gonna go to a Bible class tonight wherever it may be and I hope you'll take advantage of this opportunity make the most of your time while you're here but tonight right now ask yourself are you a true follower are you a Christian tonight? Are you a faithful Christian? Maybe tonight you've never obeyed the gospel. You're not a Christian. Why not? Why not tonight? Believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Be willing to repent of your sins. Confess your faith in Christ. You too can be baptized. Maybe you've done that. You are a Christian, but you haven't been a true follower. You haven't been a faithful Christian. 
Maybe tonight it's time to repent and get all of that right. We sing a song tonight to encourage, a song of invitation. If we can help, whatever the need is, just come and let us know how as we stand together and sing. When the Savior calls, I will answer. When he calls for me, I will hear. When the Savior calls, I will answer. I'll be somewhere listening for my name. I'll be somewhere. Thank you for being here this evening, and uh, if you may be visiting with us, we're glad to have you and hope that you'll come back at every opportunity that you have. Doesn't seem like it's been nine months since I taught the last class in here, but time flies. And you know, uh, I've been a little worried about this class because uh, I'm having my eyes redone with cataract surgery, and uh, I got one done, and uh, if I can see as much out of the other eye when I get it done as this one, I'm going to be in good shape. But like my look, they found a growth on the lens of this eye, and they had to scrape it, so now I've got until uh, September the 21st, and I've got to go have the other one done. And it's been rough. 
I tell you, putting drops in your eye three and four times a day, if it wasn't for my wife, I wouldn't uh, get any in mine. And Faye comes in bragging this afternoon, and she says, uh, I finished my drops today, wasn't it? And tonight, and uh, she's smiling. And uh, I'm, I'm proud for her, though, and I'm proud that she's got Ralph because uh, she said that if it hadn't been for Ralph putting them in his eyes, she couldn't have made it uh, either. So uh, bear with me. If I have to get down looking at the Bible and my notes real low, I'll do the best that I can, and I apologize for that. This quarter, we're going to study about a subject that is not new to you, but it's going to be a series of lessons on the apostles. Uh, when I was growing up, uh, this is another one of my tales, you can believe it or not, but I, I used to love to read. I grew up over on Barn Street at the top of the hill, and one of the highlights of my week was during the summer, uh, I walked from the end of Barn Street up to the library when it was uptown. Now, some of you may remember the old light, but uh, it was a, to me, it was a beautiful building that had the the porch and so forth, and I walked up there every week, and I got I, I picked out four books, and I read four books every week, and all of those here. It's been two years ago. I was out at the library, and, and I went in there and found a book that I read, and my name was still down there on the the card that we signed. But I love to read biographies and autobiographies. Well, that's basically what we're going to do this quarter. We're going to, after the introduction tonight, we're going to look at each of the apostles, and we're going to get into their lives, what they did, and, uh, and so forth. And I hope that you'll enjoy it as much as I uh, enjoyed preparing for, for this week. If you open your Bibles and let's look at Matthew chapter 10, of course, uh, there are some of you that I know that have the ability to stand up right now and uh, give me the names of all 12 of the apostles plus the one that they uh, replaced uh, Judas Carrot uh, with. And, uh, we, and, and, and I, I, I can't do that. I can, I can, uh, I could probably take uh, pencil and paper and write down and finally get through all 12 of them. But we read in Matthew chapter 10, uh, beginning in verse 2, these are the names of the 12 apostles. First, Simon, who's called Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. We're going to look at these 12 along with the one of Matthias that replaced uh, Judas. And that's going to be what we're going to be studying this week. And uh, a lot of you, I'm sure, already know about the apostles. What, what is the definition of an apostle? What does the word apostle mean? One who is sent. They were messengers. The apostles were messengers. Now, to begin with, I want us to talk a little bit about the difference between an apostle and disciple. Anybody want to answer that?
you and I hopefully are disciples, right? And and uh, Scott made a, a, a very good part of the answer to that. An apostle was an eyewitness of Christ. He saw Christ. He was an eyewitness. With that thought in mind, we no longer have an apostle. If a religious organization, as we have a lot of them, that have apostles, they call men within those congregations apostles. The Mormons, one in particular, they have apostles. But I hope after we get through studying to a little bit tonight that you'll realize that because the definition of, of an apostle and one of the uh, requirements of an apostle was that that person had to be an eyewitness to Christ. Had to have been an eyewitness. And if you don't get anything else out of the lesson tonight, remember that point. They, you had to be an eyewitness. But as, as we said, <clears throat> the Bible talks about the apostles teaching other disciples. Christ taught other disciples. We who teach, we who teach are teaching other disciples. Now, the method that Christ used in teaching the apostles was that he spent time and through the Holy Spirit, that's the way they were taught. They followed Jesus. Just like we who are disciples, hopefully we are training other disciples and they're watching us and they're listening to us and they're following us. I've said this a lot of times before. If you teach an adult class, you do a lot of studying. You do a lot of studying. And as I was preparing this first lesson, I... I, I probably read two or three hours. And you can find all kind of educational information, especially if you use the Internet. And I ran across one article that talked about discipleship and leaders within the church. And I can't give you verbatim what, the article said uh, word for word. But it talked about this. We know that Christ was a leader, that Christ taught the apostles, and that Christ wanted them to take what he had taught them and go out and teach and train other disciples and it talked about this this was a church of christ article that that's the only ones i use but it said that one of the problems that we have within the church right now is the fact that elders that in a lot of churches now some of you are going to disagree with me i feel when i make this statement we'll talk about it but it said that elders are not doing the job that they should be doing in training disciples to do the work that needs to be done, especially teaching. That in a lot of congregations, that elders are doing 90% of the work that is done in a local body when the members and those who are professed to be Christians and disciples should be doing what? 
the work. They should be doing the work. This is not to get on to anybody. I'm just making uh, a reference to this. And, and I, I think about teaching. I think about teaching. And I think about how we need teachers for the work here in the local congregation. Uh, some of us know, some of you know, that you have to be used so much that you reach a stage of completely being burnt out, that we need to be training other people to teach. And it does elders good to have somebody to volunteer, even if they've never taught a class, but they want to learn how to plan, how to teach a class. Here a few weeks ago, we had a men's breakfast. Brian isn't here tonight, so I can talk about him. Uh, one of the things that Brian wanted to do was he wanted to give the talk before we have, before we had the breakfast that morning. Uh, it wasn't long, but it was pretty meaningful, wasn't it, Jay? It was pretty, and, and he was so proud of himself, and he said, I'm going to get better. I'm going to get better. But if you, I've asked this several times. If you've never thought about teaching, you need to think about it. I've always said I get more out of teaching and preparing to teach this class than sitting in the pew and listening to someone teach it because I promise that you will study and you will learn. We've got some great teachers here. We've got some women that are great, great teachers. But we burn a lot of them out. Or they get burned out, but they just keep it going. When we need others, when we need others. I remember as long as Nell's sister, Nell Smith, was living, she was going to teach a quarter ever so. And if, she did, if you didn't ask her, when I was in charge of the education, if I didn't ask her to teach, I got an earful. I'm still capable of doing it was always her reply. So, as disciples, let's work on trying to get people to do the work, some of the work that needs to be done within the local congregation here. It gets so easy to come and sit down in a pew and let somebody else do it. And uh, it, 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 does, it does a teacher good when... You can tell that they've put a lot of time into preparation and you may be walking out there and somebody stop and say, I really enjoyed that. There's some ladies in here that have complimented me after a lesson and, and it was worth, it was just to feel them grab my arm and say, that was such a good lesson. It does us good to hear that. But think about what we can do as a disciple. We can't be an apostle. None of us have seen Jesus. We didn't uh, come in contact with Jesus. But we can be disciples. We can be disciples. Okay, let's get into, into the lesson, Mercy. Uh, let's, uh, let's go to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. And let's look at uh, verses 11, 12, and 13. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 through 13. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God 
and become mature, attaining the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Verse 11 there, when he mentioned apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, what was the, who was the first group that he mentioned? The apostles. They were very important. They were very important from the day of Pentecost on in forming the church, in forming uh, the church. Uh, as, as we mentioned a minute ago, the first requirement, now we know that Jesus appointed the apostles and the fact that they had seen Jesus or witnessed Jesus was one of the requirements that they held. And uh, they had to be eyewitnesses. And for that reason, there can't be any apostles today because there's no one living that saw Jesus, that witnessed his teachings, his death, his burial, his resurrection, as a lot had done at that time. And the apostles had done that. So uh, the fact that they were able to testify, that they were able to have the testimony of Jesus being alive and, and what he said and what he said uh, and so uh, they they were not self-appointed uh, witnesses uh, they had seen what Christ had done had what he had uh, done uh, What else made the apostles different than just being being an eyewitness? What did Christ do for them? Okay. That's right. What about filling them with the Holy Spirit? They were filled with the Holy Spirit. And I asked Charles to do this. I said, now, only five or ten minutes. But uh, I know that Charles is teaching a lesson on uh, the Holy Spirit because my wife's been bragging about it since Sunday. Uh, and we know that they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And I've asked him to talk a few minutes about being filled with the Holy Spirit, what it did for the apostles. Spirit, it said in Acts 2 
sat upon each of them, and he allowed them to speak other languages and everything in the world that we wouldn't think is normal. They raised uh, uh, people who were lame. They did all kinds of things, and yet not everybody believed. But the purpose of the apostles was, as quick as that inspiration was done, as Paul said in, uh, in the 13th chapter of 1 Corinthians, the day is coming when they won't do these things. And we sometimes are confused about this, and I'm, some people don't think about it, but in the second chapter of, uh, in the first chapter of Acts, it says that, or the second, I guess it is, verse 8 or something, where it said that, uh, quoting Joel, that the time would come when the young men and young women would prophesy. Their sons and daughter would. So we don't think about this, but the inspiration through the Holy Spirit, not only the prophets, but they gave it to other people, including women, to do the job they needed to do without error. And so we don't think of that always, but the purpose in all of that was is so that the pattern would be established and written down. So we don't need an apostle today in the first place. If he did, he'd be 2,000 years old. But, uh, we don't think of that, what that was to the people. It didn't control what they could do because you as his character and do well. But it dwelt in them, it directed what they had to say. And uh, they said it without error, and they said everything that God wanted us to know. And we've still got it. Any questions? But they were equipped to do great things. And they did. They did uh, so many great things. Uh, do you think, and we'll talk more about this as we get into looking at each one of the apostles, do you think that the apostles were extraordinary men? They weren't extraordinary. In fact, you know, they probably question why Jesus appointed some of them. And we'll see from the character of some of them uh, why they were not extraordinary men. When they were filled with the Holy Spirit, they were chosen by Christ, and he taught them. He taught them to be messengers. If it wasn't for... No, you go ahead. And... and that verse right there makes it people that may not have a reputation for being an intelligent human being, they can still do the work that disciples should be able to do. I, I remember hearing about Former, I remember studying about the restoration movement and some of the characters uh, that came out of that uh, restoration movement. Uh, Campbell, Alexander, uh, some of the, I can't think of some of the men, but I read that book, and it's a, it's a good biography of a lot of those men that were involved and, and, and they were like the apostles. Some of them were, were uneducated men. And I've heard, I may be getting this wrong, but I've heard Charles talk a lot of times about Marshall Keeble. And I'm not sure how much of an education he had. But he was taught himself. He was taught himself. And that, I thought that was right. But we shouldn't let that hinder us from doing the work that God wants us to do. 
that God wants us to do. We can all find things that needs to be doing within the church. And a lot of people here in this congregation have done that. I, I tell this at least once a year, just like I did about Nail. Uh, Sister Jones, Gertrude Jones, what was she known for? Food. Food. She, she, she converted a lot of people because of apple tarts. Because she was known. If she came to visit you, she was going to bring you a pie. I think that's right. Isn't that right? Y'all remember that? You remember where she lived down here? And uh, she, but she could bake pies. And they were good. I can taste one right now. But uh, it was good. Well, that. And uh, I, I liken that. Uh, I, I think about that made me think about something that uh, Coach Riggs told me one time that he had won a, a state championship, and I said, "Wow, y'all, y'all got a really, really good team." He said, "No, we're just average." He said, "You look across the team, and we're really just a group of average guys that play well together." do the right things. And then I got to thinking about the body of Christ. We're, we're just a group of extraordinary, extraordinarily ordinary people, average people, but as the body of Christ, there are so many things that we can do, that we should do, that we leave undone. Uh, and I think about if we as a team, like he was talking about, a group of average people who love the Lord would do the things that we can do and not worry about the things we can't do. I, I've often talked about this. I've always talked about the core group. We've got as fine a core group. may not be extraordinarily large, but we've got a, a core group here within the Ark Church that needs to be done, you count on it. I always been about for this. I always worry about it. Every time we have a fifth Sunday dinner, is yeah. there going to be a man? Is there going to be enough food there? Gary. Huh? Gary. Yeah. But, uh, that's right. That's right. And well, I can tell you for a fact that when we have a meal, most of the time there's going to be a tray of brownies back there that Bob's cooked or cookies. And, uh, that they're they are they're appreciated. But I'm proud of the core group. I'm proud and I'm talking to the ninety nine percent of the core group right now because every time those doors open back there we can count on you being here. God appreciates it, the elders appreciate it, and I know that all of you appreciate it, Brother Trey. Thank <laughs> you.
one thing that we need to point out about the apostles was the fact that their their teachings were permanent. Where would where would the New Testament be without the writings of so many of the apostles? Trey probably can. I can't tell you for sure. I, I, all of the books in the New Testament written by apostles? Which ones weren't? Okay. And uh, that there's 27 books. In the New Test, in the Old New Testament, so their teachings are permanent. They're there. They're there, and we can thank the apostles for those teachings. They were messengers. They brought us the message, and. That's what apostles are. I'm not going to get quite through those couple of things that I... Uh, if we look in Acts chapter 2, uh, verses 47, verses 42 through 47. Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 2, verses 42 through 47. <clears throat> they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to breaking of bread, to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold the property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and they ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. As Christians today, as disciples today, we need to apply what is talked about here in Acts chapter 2. We need to apply that. We need to apply the apostles' teachings to our everyday lives, to our everyday lives. But the apostles were very, very uh, individuals that they had their faults, but Jesus saw through their faults because he knew the abilities that they had, and he made the right choice as he selected uh, the 12 original uh, apostles. He made the correct uh, choice. In, Ma in uh, Luke chapter 6 and verse 12, it's recorded that Jesus isolated himself with prayer before he announced who his original 12 were. And uh, what a job they did in helping the establishment of the Lord's church. Uh, and it's interesting, as we'll learn this quarter, on how they lost their lives, how they died, and the highlights of what some of them did. There's not much recorded about a few of them. We don't learn much about two of the uh, apostles. We learn what we need to know. And we should be remembering that those who teach today within the church, that they're trying to motivate us 
to win souls to Christ and to do the work that Christ wants us to do. Anybody got anything else they want to add, Bob? Right. Well, and that's like I pointed out, but the fact that we know that the twelve remember that in this lesson we pointed out that the twelve uh, apostles were eyewitness to Jesus. And when we find a religious organization that still appoint apostles, that's the Satan at work right there. That's Satan at work. And uh, so we need to remember that. Anybody got any questions? Thank you for being here. I hope that we can make this interesting. Next week, I, I, I started to, I don't think it'd be the right question to ask, but every one of us probably have a favorite apostle. Probably got a favorite apostle. And hopefully when we get to that apostle, I mean to that apostle that you have studied and that you'll have some things that you can tell us that uh, I don't know and other people may not know. But uh, I hope it'll be a good study. I hope you'll be back uh, every Wednesday night. Let's close with a word of prayer. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, thank you for being with us as we taught this lesson. We pray, Heavenly Father, that each day of our lives, that each one of us will try to be the kind of us disciples that we should be, help more people to get involved in the work, Heavenly Father, to want to be disciples for you and to, to help the church grow, Heavenly Father. Be with those that are not with us this evening. We pray that all those that are sick will have restful evenings. Be with those that will be traveling this weekend, Heavenly Father, and take care of them. Heavenly Father, more than anything else, we thank you for Christ. We thank you for what he did for us. We thank you that through his death, burial, and resurrection that we have the opportunity for eternal life if we'll accept your plan of salvation be baptized and then live for you heavenly father for us in christ's name we pray amen